Look, look, it's the cool Dante over on the left. You see him? Do you oh, see him? Oh, it's the good one. You see him? It's the good one. That Dante's fucking dead. It's... Dead to the world. It's such... It's the biggest tragedy. Yeah. In the, uh, ever. That it's not an awful design. Is that a fucking font they use for Street Fighter collections? Mm -hmm. In the press any button? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like I've seen it before. But God damn it, Devil May Cry Dante 2 is the coolest It's so cool. It's, it's the worst part of it. And all the art that they put out with him was amazing. That trailer that was live action was amazing, and you can never write it off. You can never write it off. You know, it's the best jacket. You know what I can write off? This is a really bare bones HD collection for sure. This is a bare bones menu. Yeah, look, like, and you go to Vault. I feel like I'm looking at uh, a website. And circa you, you see this stuff? So while I was picking around uh, before, I found something of interest to us, mm. which will come up in uh, ongoing conversations. Mm -hmm. It's not this weird thing mm -hmm. that looks like a goddamn bioweapon mm -hmm. from Resident Evil. That looks like a bioweapon. Or weapon. this goddamn thing, which is a bioweapon version mm. of fucking uh, Phantom. Yeah, or this. I don't know who that is. Who is that? Character <laughs> illustration non-specified. That's Tony Redgrave. It's this character. Go back. That's Redgrave. That's Tony? That's Redgrave. You sure? I'm, I'm, I believe that's Redgrave. Cool, Grave. but Tony doesn't exist anymore, or no, what? No, he doesn't exist anymore. Okay. It's this character. The two pieces of art of this character labeled only as Spencer. Which... <laughs> I'm going to assume... That's Sparta. ...are a holdover. That was supposed to be Sparta. And didn't become Sparta. Or it was supposed to be the villain. Because uh. this man's creepy old man face, if you were to decrepit him up and make him bald, would look pretty similar to uh, Oswald Spencer in RE5. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's one of those things that, because we're huge nerds, we're going to end up talking about quite a bit as we play Devil May Cry 1. Hey man, I want two things out of you. What's that? I want, sh I want headshotted scissor fuckers. You got that for free. And I but warning, this game contains explicit violence and gore. Gore. Also a holdover. Oh man, it's so Let's old, rock, baby. It's very old. Okay. This is one of the older okay. ones we played in a while. This is the first time I had ever heard inverted echoes as a, an audio effect mm -hmm. and i didn't know what they were and i went into gold wave yeah. and played around with my computer microphone until i figured it out uh -huh. and you take your you, you record yourself talking you reverb reverse it mm -hmm. put an echo on the reverse and then reverse it back to normal so wow. you get a backwards echo the devil may cry wow that's how you get that effect i was obsessed with it I want to see this headshotted is... scissor fuckers. Yeah. Well, that's one you get for free. And I want to see Phantom's fucking fireball Let's hit back at him. Hit back at him. Point blank. Look at these shitty old videos. So. And then the other freebie is um, a roll cancel um, grenade launcher. Grenade launcher. Well, which I is, mean, I have to use that. There's no, that's the must. So, yeah. um, so there's going to be a little bit of history lesson alongside this, as this game is notable for, like, a dozen reasons. There are tons of them. Are we going to actually pretend people don't Too know? Yeah, a lot of people know. don't. What Devil May Cry a is? A lot of people don't. And the other, the underworld. But somebody from the underworld. <laughs> somebody from the underworld. Just woke up to justice! Yeah. I always love that line. It's very Japanese translated. But it's Later, still the, great. The Bugman Sparta world. doing his kata kicks. Look I'm, at him go. I'm gonna to cut you. Death. Did you think he was he a Bugman? Weirdly enough, possibly Bayonetta's Dark uncle. Knight. What? Legendary Dark Knight. Don't worry about that. Look at this fucking PS2 game. Look at this shit. Yeah. Eh, 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 eh. I was looking at Trish's old designs. Like, the all the, the ones they threw away. Every single one is superior to the one we got, which is the which is the disaster of looking at old concept art. But the one we got isn't this isn't this uh, Mikami's dream babe? <sighs> I don't know if it works like that. I think that I thought don't that Trish cry. was Mikami's dream babe. Uh, sorry, we closed at nine. Mikami? Again, no password. 
We can't seem to get any real business. Yeah. Hello. Where'd you get the motorcycle? Oh, slow down, babe. I just realized that she floated down from space. Dante closing at nine o'clock is oh, kind of ridiculous. It is. Nature calls. It's in the back. <laughs> so, you must be the handyman who'll take any dirty job. This reads like oh porn. God. It really does. Almost. I only take. And look, it look, it basically jobs. is. If you know what, what was I mean. the sword hanging on? For cleavage. You're the man who lost Look how much you can see the it's the texture ago. in the, the back. Of the legendary Dark Look at it, it's like yeah, a matte yeah, painting. Yeah. That's what that is! Yeah, yeah, yeah basically. Blu-ray yeah. matte paintings are the, are the equivalent. fake background texture. And if I kill each one that comes, eventually I should hit the jackpot. jackpot. Yes. Oh. You should be used to this sort of thing. So I would like to point out that Dante has a picture of his mom lovingly uh, placed on his desk. Sees her every day, he does. By the way, that's a Resident Evil blood effect. Um, I and then his mom, young and hot, walks into the bar. Starts to electrocute him. And he doesn't even think twice no, about I've, it. Uh, no eyeball blinking. Sword. <laughs> Time to go to work, guys. Now, let's look at what happened. He knows he stopped it with devil energy. He did. Boy, I wish he had ever used that power <laughs> ever again, ever. I, they might have been going for slow-mo that was like yeah. cool mo. What strength? Uh, the piano in the background. You were the first one to know about is, my vengeance. Might as well have come out of like RE2 or RE3. Yeah. Yeah, same sound. The set the total soundscape is actually really, really similar. I wonder why that is. It seems that way. But I'm not your enemy. My name is Trish. Even the voice acting. But I'm not your, your mom. Help. My name is Trish. An end to the underworld. What? Like... <gasps> the sunglasses. <laughs> oh there. my god. Yeah, so, yeah. The fucking Clark Kent effect. Yeah, the, all, every, every part of this game's sound and cutscene direction and Mind all that the is pure Resident Evil. His powers were sealed by Sparta. He's attempting 20 years doesn't seem like a long time to seal the Demon King away, does it? Again, I mean, it's it's your enough time for your kid to grow up. That's about it. Malay Island. Oh my god, I almost forgot about the plane. Oh yeah? Almost. How could you? Okay. Let's start this out with Devil May Cry's thesis statement. Yes, which is... Dante can be cool... Action heroes can be cool, stylish, the without the smoking, Come on, drinking, or swearing. That's right. They can be cool without being edgy. And that's basically what the entire thing is built off of. Stylistically, at least. Is yeah. How can, what, ca what can a character do to maintain ease, style and ease? One might call it a steeze. <laughs> and this this was not without actually going to this the edge. was not just a mission statement for Capcom. Resident Evil characters also follow this exact template. Like look at Leon and how big Leon got. Yeah, but they right. don't trash talk bosses. Yes, they do. Do they? Leon does in four. Trash talks those bosses like fuck. Damn, to Dante's level. Your I right mean, hand comes off. Your small time saddler. All sorts of shit. I okay, okay. And I wonder why that is. So. The history lesson is, back in the 90s, they wanted to have a more action-oriented Resident Evil game. Mm -hmm. And so they made Resident Evil 4, which I'm going to call Resident Evil 4 Part 1, mm -hmm. which ended up being a massive disaster because it was too weird to be Resident Evil. So they turned it into this. They also, I believe, was, uh, they accidentally had a juggle system going I heard that it was something along the lines of enemies were being juggled in ridiculous ways. Much like the old combos. And it was fun, but unintended yeah. to the design, and they kind of went, maybe we can do something with this. So, uh, you're gonna notice a lot of pre-rendered, uh, not pre-rendered, a lot of 3D backgrounds with pre-rendered style camera angles. Yes. That's because this is a Resident Evil game. Yeah. Blue Worm Fragment, thanks for the heart piece. Uh, you're gonna notice a lot of weird cutscene direction and monster design. That's because it's a risk. You're gonna and, notice and, that the guns do nothing. Yeah. And the other thing is that, uh, 
the fucking progression and overall structure and level design follows a, the Resident Evil formula of of mansion, uh, mansion outside mansion lab. Just the lab is hell. Also, find meaningless trinket and put that's correct. Meaningless trinket into meaningless place. The the influence is is outrageous. To the point where Leon uh, Leon and Dante even have like similar hairstyles. Yeah, they do actually. They right? Do, they do. Hey, Wooly, when you saw Leon in RE4, what part of his look was the thing that stood out the most to you? Was it his cool fucking jacket? <laughs> it's almost like yeah, yeah, yeah. at some point they discovered, what if we just gave our characters cool fucking jackets? Yeah, Would that make them cool? Everyone likes a cool jacket. And the answer is yes. Also, white hair, long red jacket. Like, you either go that way or you go blonde hair, long red jacket. Yeah. And that's that's full on anime for you. Which is what, uh, I remember reading an article with, uh, uh not at Suno, it was with Kamiya, I want to say. The colors just go together. And, uh, why is his hair right? white? And the answer was, because white hair is the symbol of the elite. Ah. But, and then I look back on it now, it's like, no, it's because it clashes with his fucking. And it's a good complimentary color to his fucking. Reasons. Whatever. Yeah, so it's because of, you know, Vash the Stampede and Edward Elric and, and, and. Yeah, all that shit. So I should mention at the start of the game, we have we have our guns, which in this game you have to aim. I, I started mashing square and was like, why? why they don't lock on. No, you have to aim them. You have your basic three hit one, two, three. Bop, bop. Bop. You got your delay. You've got your big delay, which is million stabbed right there. And I don't know if this move was ever named, but it's a slow delay. It's a very slight delay. You just but wait to hit the button till the, it hits the end of its swing, and then you get that. Yeah. And that's pretty. Mu this one's pretty much what you want to use. Uh, do you unlock double overhead later? Double overhead. Like like delay like one, and then he does. Look at my hands. He swings it above like this. No, that's Double May Cry Three only. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. There's there. The, the DMC-1 moveset is much more primitive than you may remember. But you do unlock Drive and... Uh, no way. Not Drive, Round Trip. I keep meaning to say dr Round Trip when I say Why Drive. Why do you want to say Drive when you mean Round Trip? I mean Round Trip. You, you unlock Round Trip and you unlock uh, Demon um, Flying Electric uh, 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 thing. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the basic deal is that I was thinking about this on the way over here. It's like RE4 is... That that's one of those games gonna go down forever of like Ocarina of Time and stuff like just ridiculous all time classic right? And I think like why is it so? Oh, there's Mundus. Hey Mundus. Um, why is it so good? It's the pacing, right? The pacing is perfect. Speaking of pacing, you should get into a fight. I can't. I have to collect all the red orbs in this room. <laughs> That was going to be what I was going to segue into after doing this part, if I was still stuck in the fucking room. But yeah, in this first room, you have to collect all the red orbs. Why? So that you can open the door. Because it's trying to teach you, hey man, red orbs and shit. Collect them. I believe I've gotten most of them. Let's see if the door will let me through. Uh, where was I there? Oh uh, yeah, why is Resident Evil 4 so good? Because of the pacing. Well, RE4 had a luxury, and the Resident Evil team in general had a luxury, that almost no other fucking team ever got. Which is, they got to make and throw away three almost complete versions of a game. Was one of those just a vertical slice? The 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 the, the one. The, what was it called? Something man. Claw a hook man. Hook man. So, there are four versions of RE4. One, thanks for the war, by the way, is this, and you can see the influences here and in Haunting Ground. Now, I was unaware of any, like, noted things of Haunting Ground. That is a great shot. I love that. <laughs> that blew my fucking mind when it, back in 2001. But when me and Matt played Haunting Ground, like, the architectural similarity to this game, like, in the castle, yeah. is so obvious. It's like, oh, this is where they junked a bunch of the other Resident Evil ideas. Mm. Um, so they got to make this. This was supposed to be the action-oriented Resident Evil. A way bigger success than future attempts at any action-oriented Resident Evil. Then they made Hookman. Now, Hookman was not just a vertical slice. There was more, but it was not nearly as far along as this one was. And there was video of that. Yes. A vertical slice uh, video got out from a trade show. It looks like shit, but you get to see the whole demo, and it's pretty cool. It's very different in tone. It also looks unbelievable, because the rooms are very, very small. 
Uh, so we're gonna pick this key up. Uh, and then there is a third version, which I've never been able to find any documentation on, which is very similar to the one we got. Uh, oh. RE3, RE4 Part 3. Hello, mannequin. Oh. Um, hello, hello, toys. Uh, hello, other mannequin that's he evil. Hello, toys that come in a case of a hundred toys, but only one Dante per case that uh. nobody could sell. So, that right there, that high time into bullets, that is... What makes the game Bravo, absolute crazy. Oh, cool. And the style meter in this game is like all over the place. Awkward language. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, when they made those Devil May Cry 1 toys, oh, yeah. they made Dante one per case, which means you had to buy an entire shipment of dolls with one Dante in it. And guess what everyone who wants a Devil May Cry toy wants? They want Dante. Isn't that insane? So fucking Sounds comic like a good shops. Way to sell amiibos. Comic shops around the fucking world had tons of these stupid statues, and they were all way pissed off. I bet they were. Because they they, they got ripped off, and the Dante would always basically go immediately, and then you got stuck with Fuck these stupid yeah. statues. Got a blue orb. Or a ma mannequins. Yeah, that's that's about right. That seems about appropriate. So much like a, a Resident Evil game. By the way, Willie, I tricked you into doing a Resident Evil thing. Um, hey! Oh, no, no, God forbid! Uh, oh, no! You need some bullshit to, to open this! Yeah. Yeah. Some bullshit! Just take any fucking candelabra or magical key and stick it into any fucking bookshelf slot. Yeah, absolutely. And watch the shit move. So yeah, RE3 Part 3 was similar to the one we got, but they did like a massive rework of the levels and the enemies, you know, that kind of thing. Like the same basic idea it was. It was it, it, crazy humans as the idea. Um, and then they made the one that we got. And they had so much fucking time and money and ability to throw shit away. And they got spin-offs out of it. Multiple spin-offs in some cases. Made money. He is rusted, but it should work. Yeah, but I, I forgot where to go. Haha. <laughs> also, your um your your you didn't uh well it's the uh, as far as the, the move set goes, limited as it may be, right off the bat you had the ability to interrupt any of those strings with your launcher. Absolutely. At any point. It's very important. And launcher into you know your, your high times into your uh, your gun juggles yeah. was an unheard of, unseen, unknown concept at the time. So let me ask you: When was the first time you ever saw any footage or your personal self of Devil May Cry? I walked into Microplay in 2001 when the PlayStation 2 was on shelves for must have been a month, mm -hmm. maybe a month, maybe more than maybe a couple weeks, more than that, but. Uh, I walked into Microplay, and it was pay two dollars to play for half an hour. And someone was on it, and on it, and I was staring at it, and I was like, "This is the PlayStation 2. I want to play the PlayStation. Uh, uh, yeah, I want to. I want to play this this console. But also, this is that new game, and it looks crazy. What's going on? I can't believe bullets are be juggling the yep, enemies. That's correct." And that was, yeah, that was, yeah, whatever, mid-2001. So, mid, mid the first time I ever saw this game, I actually saw it before it came out, uh, because GameSpot actually had video of it. They had, like, a minute of video of it on their E3 website give that little, year. Give us a little high time. And what ended up happening... Oh, well, we did get a high time. Oh. There we go. Uh, what ended up happening is they called it Capcom's Answer to Castlevania. <laughs> And will this be able to compete with, like, any upcoming Konami 3D Castlevania? <laughs> um, that is and fucking hilarious. What a fucking in retrospect time capsule that oh, idea is. Wow. Now, obviously, you know, this game obviously shares inspiration from Castlevania, right? But can it possibly dethrone Castlevania 64? I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible. I mean, oh I guess my it... god, man, what a cool fucking design! Just oh, so good, oh. but still gothic. Yeah, right. He's not full on party boy. Not yet. He's not old party boy yet either. Yeah, like this is this is still this is still like. 
a respectable outfit for a son of Sparta, you know? Yeah. Which means, like... This outfit's not getting crazy just yeah. yet. Which means... And the thing is, that means that, like, even though Dante's, like, evolution chronologically has been into a more serious and tamed adult... Kinda. We got... Yeah, chronologically. Chronologically, he became more of an adult, right? More mature. But... For us, the fans, in, in release order, we get more and wild Dante, which is what we've wanted. And then because that's the Dante we want, by the time he comes back as an old man, he's the wildest he's ever been. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, I'm old! That's what I hear <laughs> from him, right? You know? You're like, Woo! like the Dante we want is, is, is just like him amped up. Congrats to me, I cleared the stage. This must mean that, um, Devil Hunter rank. Yeah. This must mean that, uh, like, yeah, for the for, at some point after he loses his brother, he kind of gets all somber for a while, and then he, he stays that way. Clear. And then he sees his brother's son, and he goes, Ah, time to fucking dick around again. Well, yeah. Right? Does that make sense? That's it. That power up. I think that makes sense. It does make sense. Now, I could get these things, such as the yellow orb and no. the purple orb. No! Or the blue orb, which is decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're not gonna do any of that shit. We're gonna save our red orbs. See, the other new and unexpected idea that Devil May Cry introduced was one where the power-ups you can buy... Like, that is my favorite stance. It's so perfect. It's so awkward. Shut um, up. The one where you buy... Uh, shit that wastes your money because if you're getting better at the game, you don't need those things. You don't need those items. Right? These are all complete waste. What you should be spending on is permanent changes to your character. That make your character stronger and more uh, like, like, able to deal with threats. Because spending money on error correction, you're going to continue to make those errors. Unfortunately, there was a ass and Ooh, look at this shit. Look at the Z fighting. Mm -hmm. That was not... I don't oh, feel like that was present. That's, that's Z battles right there. It's a Z war. Oh, man. Z war! <laughs> We've moved on from Z fighting to the Z war! It's going hard. I love that. It's going hard. Um... Yeah, the, the unfortunate reality of that, however, is that a lot of the game's S rankings are tied into orb collection. Well, yeah. as a result, yeah, yeah. and it's like... And not only that, some of the orbs are based on standing in weird places yes, for a couple they, seconds. They sure are. And I hate those. Those are probably the dumbest things about the game. And I'm including filling Dark Souls with light and planes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, don't hey, the plane... Don't knock the plane. That plane... Ended up being just as fun when it was a jet ski. Oh my god. How about when it became Afterburner in Hang On? In, yeah. In, 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 uh, Kamiya's definitely got a really specific last level that he likes. I mean, look. I, I said it recently, but in Near Automata, oh, fuck, I forgot. they also do a send-up to a plane game. But that plane game is Ikaruga. Yeah. And you shmup your way through a bunch of that, and it's fantastic, and it's also not throwaway. You know what's not throwaway? Afterburner. Yeah, it's not. But the No but, it is, I lied. No, no, it's not. But the but the Bayo implementation of it is definitely like super bonus, who cares? Fun. You know? Oh wow, this afterburner level ruins the best level in the game otherwise. Shit. Uh, Shit. Don't get you. I'm Devil May Cry man. If you're Dante, you can do whatever you want. Oh! Um. So, so the, yeah, the introduction of money being wasted on error correcting is an interesting thing that we learned. And it's ever since that, it's never gone away. Never. Right? To the point where, inherently, when we all popped in the Wonderful 101 mm -hmm. and saw that you could buy a bunch of these items at the Wonder Mart, we, oh, we got to the end of the game and had that discussion going, have any of you seen what those items do? No. Because we have no idea because they're single use. So what's interesting is that, um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this cutscene and then continue this. There's a sculpture of a female in agony with a sword pierced through her chest. Wait, I can hear a voice. I am Alastor. The weak shall give their heart and swear their eternal loyalty to me. I will show up in Beautiful Joe. And it'll be rad. Yeah, this is the moment 
This is the iconic cutscene right I, here. I completely, like, this is where the game just lost me. Yeah? Because I'm like, why would you do it in this weird way? Like, I understand that he can survive getting stabbed, right? Yeah. But why would you go this way where you have to go through the fucking handle and The hit? big handle! It's really big! That's the hardest, most ugly way to do this! Why would you do that? Now it's in your neck! Oh, it's everywhere! It's through his head oh, now! Wow. It came out the back of your head! Because I'm so tough! It's not a samurai sword, it's a gigantic blade, and I guess you're baptized in it now. But the hilt is huge! So we have the Force Edge, and the Force Edge is fine, and in fact the Force Edge will later go on to be more than fine. Yeah, it'll be the best. <laughs> it'll be the fucking sickest. But, for the vast majority of Double May Cry 1, Alistair is the shit. And it's a good one. I mean, to the point that, like, they bring this weapon as a character into other games. Yeah. Not like this is iconic. Unli unlike Aiden Pierce's iconic baseball iconic. hat. Okay. Uh, let's go. Force Edge, Rebellion, uh, uh, Alistair. I like, uh, I like the Force Edge, but in the offhand. The correct answer is Yamato. That's a. That's, <laughs> I knew you were gonna do that, but I wasn't gonna play along anyway. So let's get on back to the shop. So what the fuck was I talking you about? You know what I? I mean, well, what do we get to it? Don't be bored to say. But I actually do have some problems with. Um, with there, Virgil's not perfect. He's not. And there's some weirdness. Oh, and now we have a thing for Alistair. Isn't and it? a lot of that weirdness is is in this game in particular. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, Air Hike is the most uh, fucking expensive one, as it deserves. For good fucking However, music. Air Raid and Vortex, you can just fucking throw those in the garbage. Air you Raid... You don't need that. ...is the biggest waste of money. I remember looking at it and being so tempted, because look how cool that looks. Oh, wow. And it sounds cool, and then it just turns out that... Vortex is even worse. I've never used Vortex and been happy, ever. I'm sure there's some sick combo videos that use yeah, it. Yeah, how about fuck that? Let's take the, the let's take the move that was later integrated into, into the, the core character. Moveset. Yeah, 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 yeah. A move that used to be Alistair specific, and then became no. You need this all the time. Mm -hmm. And Stinger level one's always disappointing. You know, someone rightfully pointed out the other day that I'm always talking about how the difference between Stinger and Snatch is how and why I like Hero. And yeah. That. And so on, and they point, still great. and and they and they and they point, and it's true. I do point that out. And they did, and they said that if you're using Stinger as a way of getting around to, from enemy to enemy, then you're a scrub oh, that yeah. doesn't understand Dante. And I'm like, well, I guess you're a scrub. I guess I'm a scrub. No, I know that there's different styles and different ways to do it, obviously. But I'm just, it's the most direct parallel. The, besides the, the um, traditional way to use the Stinger is pop, pop, and then as a combo ender um, to push someone away from you. And then the other thing is, you're, if you want your direct one-to-one -one with it, you can compare Stinger streak. to Streak. Yeah. And Streak is multi-hit, and it's yeah. fucking... You get that new cut, cool spin at the end. So even that's better, too. But yes, the the the, the masters and, and S-rankers of the world Yeah, so that's what Stinger's using. really good for right there. Yeah. Which Streak is still better than! Yes, it is. Because it's horizontal! But you're using Trickster, you're using your teleports, you're using all your tools to get around. It's not just about Stinger, but it's it's my it's my bullet... Oh, no! It's my go-to bullet point uh, when talking about... Oh, what an annoying move. ...the character. Man, that that original high time into into Helm Splitter is just like so good to do. It's not as floaty as it gets later, though, right? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, because air combat isn't as much of a big deal here. It, it's still a thing, but you can't go nuts with it. You can, well, you can, um, but like you can't go anywhere near as nuts as you get to to do later on for yeah. sure. Because it was like let's do crazy shit in the air, and any kind of aerial rave was brand new. So the point I was trying to make uh, a little bit earlier, which was about, uh, we were talking about, uh, God damn it, items or moves, essentially, in the shop. Yes. That is very much a Deki Kamiya and his guys idea, and not, hello shotgun, and not an Itsuno idea, because in Itsuno's games, in 4, those were eventually just split. Into Proud Souls. Into the Proud Soul system, going, listen. 
health upgrades and shit, those can share the currency with items. Mm -hmm. But your goddamn cool ass moves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that stuff. And you know what the best part about that is? The fact that they're called Proud Souls. Yeah. It's almost like. It's almost like, okay, you have money and pride. Yeah. Are you going to spend pride on these healing items? No. No! You can't do that. That'd be a wrong thing to do. Don't do it. And the game doesn't tell you that. You just have to kind of learn that as you go. So before we get going uh, quite yet, I would like to show off something that... Oh, I forgot the analog stick taunts. I forgot that's what the analog stick used yeah. to do. Yeah, flock off, Featherface. You can stick around and find out the hard way. So... Uh, one of the thing in Devil May Cry is obviously animation canceling. You cancel this with a jump or, you know, whatever. But the easiest one is your firearms. So the the shotgun has a really long firing animation. And has that cool ch ch yep on the reload. But if you, I don't know, sidestep, you can just do this instead. Which makes the shotgun way better. Unfortunately, that leaves the pistols in the fucking dirt after all the other weapons. Which are two of them. Grim Reaper, like, but you're not really gonna be taking pot shots. On no, you're enemies. gonna be using them for juggling. Unt huh. Until a certain rocket. Should we launcher. get that uh, key? It's just a rusty key. Until a certain rocket launcher shows up. Yes. Um, well, let's yeah. get out of here. I'm sure we have. We've done everything in this room. Let's just leave. <laughs>